What's up everyone, I'm Jason C. and today on The Mash and Drum we are reviewing one of those bottles that I have not ever owned up until about, I don't know, 24 hours ago. Uh, I was lucky enough to get the new Parker's Heritage 10 year heavy char bourbon. Uh, excited to try this with you guys today, I've never had it. Uh, I think we'll kind of get into who Parker Beam was a little bit for whom this bottle is named uh, and see how this stuff is. I'm excited to try it today on The Mash and Drum. So the Parker's Heritage Collection is the shining star in the vast lineup of Heaven Hill Distillery's exploration into whiskey innovation. Now Parker Beam was named after the legendary sixth generation Beam distiller Park Beam, his grandfather. Now Park Beam was the brother of Jim Beam and Parker learned the business from his grandfather and his father Earl Beam at Heaven Hill. Now Parker's pedigree as a bourbon maker was said to be blue blood to the core and impeccable. As a grand nephew of Jim Beam, Parker Beam was born into a family that traces its whiskey making roots in Kentucky all the way back to 1795 when Jacob Beam set up his first still. So Parker Beam began his career at Heaven Hill in 1960 and learned the craft by working alongside his father, Earl Beam. The job of master distiller shifted from father to son in 1975 when Parker Beam assumed the role. Parker developed the company's and the industry's first super premium small batch bourbon with the favorite Elijah Craig small batch and the company's first single barrel bourbon in Evan Williams single barrel. Now during the last 20 years, many of Parker's creations included Evan Williams, Elijah Craig small batch and single barrel, uh, Rittenhouse Rye, and they've all won numerous and well-deserved awards and honors over the years. He also became a respected mentor to countless distillers, historians, and writers, and took his rightful place in the inaugural class of inductees to the Kentucky Bourbon Hall of Fame in 2001, and became the first and one of only four men to ever be given the Lifetime Achievement Award by the Bourbon Hall of Fame in 2015. In fact, today, the Lifetime Achievement Award has actually been named in Parker Beam's honor, which is pretty cool and just goes to show you that it's not just a name on the bottle. He was a true, uh, amazing figure in bourbon history. Now the late Heaven Hill master distiller Parker Beam unfortunately was diagnosed with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also called ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease back in 2010. So the past seven editions of Parker's Heritage from 2013 to 2019, including the Promise of Hope bourbon, the 24 year old bottled and bond, the 11 year old single barrel, the orange curacao, last year's heavy char rye whiskey, have all raised more than $1 million towards ALS research and patient care through contributions made by Heaven Hill for each one of these bottles purchased. So with this bottle and today's review, the 2020 heavy char 10 year edition, uh, Heaven Hill will again be contributing a portion of the proceeds from each bottle sold to the ALS Association, which I think is just a great tribute to, again, a legendary figure in bourbon history. All right, guys, so let's get into this beauty. This is the 14th edition, which continues the exploration of barrel char across varying mash bills. So like last year's rye, this time Heaven Hill is focusing on their bourbon mash bill of 78% corn, 12% malted barley, and 10% rye. This is aged in heavy char level five barrels as opposed to the customary level three for Heaven Hill. This is consisting of 102 barrels aged on the sixth floor of Rick House Y for exactly 10 years. Basically what Heaven Hill is doing is they're trying to explore just how much a whiskey or a bourbon can get into those barrel staves and inside a barrel, the heavier you char it. We've seen a few you know, releases that have come out that have explored this a little bit. 
Uh, you're, I mean, a little bit with the Old Forester 1910, where they're really charring the hell out of the bourbon to get that whiskey and you know make a, a huge impact on the flavor. Uh, as far as the stats for this one, this is bottled at 120 proof. It's non-chill filtered, has an MSRP of about 120 bucks. It's available now, but in, as you know, limited quantities. All right, so what I will say is this is a dark bourbon. This is a dark ass bourbon. I mean, I when I poured this, it looked like maple syrup. So that heavy char really got in there. Again, non-chill filtered, which is awesome. Cannot wait to try this, the 10 year heavy char. Heavy char, it sounds like an infomercial, right? <laughs> Come down and get your Parker's Heritage 10 year heavy char. A heavy char. <laughs> Let's go into the nose, guys, here we go. Oh, well that smells amazing. <laughs> you definitely get the barrel char, but really on top of that, it's just an amazing hint rich of vanilla. Like this is straight vanilla right out of the vanilla bean. This is like deep rich caramel, almost like a toffee, like a toffee, like candy. Man, this is like maple syrup and pancakes. Man, this is really rich. It's super sweet on the nose. You do get a little hint of the barrel char and also, so you, there, there's a smokiness aspect to it as well. Just a beautiful nose, hint of cherry there too, maybe some fruit coming through. All right, let's go for a sip. Here we go, guys. Woo! That's spicier than I thought it would be. That came in with way more, wow, it's really going on too. Way more black pepper than I thought. Man, it like it slipped like under my tongue and it's just sitting there just bubbling like like pop rocks. It's just tingling and sparking everywhere. Let's go for another sip. See how the second sip goes. Okay, now we have some flavors here. More caramel now, the vanilla on the palate. It's way more rich. That toffee flavor is coming through. That smokiness is coming through as well. There's like a Luxardo cherry note coming through here a little bit. But man, the thing that's really taking over is the spiciness. I mean, as much as you're getting the barrel char, I, you know, the, the, the black pepper aspect of it is really just coming through. I mean, the cherry is there, but it's not like, it's not exploding. This is more, this is, this is kind of like along the lines more of a, of like a butter toffee caramel vanilla bomb. And then all of a sudden, Somebody just took that combination and just dashed a bunch of black pepper on top of it. Let's go for another sip. 120 proof. I don't know if this drinks like 120 proof. I think I think the black pepperiness of it is what makes it feel hotter than it is maybe because it is spicy. It this pulled a lot of spiciness out of those uh, out of those barrels but not in a bitter way. This is not bitter at all. Just that you get some good spice, you get some good caramels. The vanillas are very rich, not a ton of cherry. There's kind of a little bit of it in there. Maybe a little like a blackberry too. Go for another sip here. Yeah, this is more, this is more of a, like a black cherry that comes through, but it's very, very faint. Yeah, this is more of like a smoked butterscotch dessert with just, just laced with a ton of caramel and very, very rich vanilla. But I gotta say, the, the, the real differentiator here in this bottle, and I like if I, you know what, let's, let's compare this real quick to Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Okay, so I have the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof B520 here, which is my favorite of the lineup this year, uh, I think, if you saw my video uh, for all the Elijah Craig Barrel Proofs I did in a head-to-head. -head. The B came out on top. The C was pretty close though. I really did like the C a lot, but the B520, just something about it this year, just really was awesome. Um, so you have $60, 65, maybe not more than 100 versus 120. Uh, this is also 10 years old versus 12 years old. And you know, at 120, you know, but obviously we all know that this is usually not priced for that much. It's usually a lot higher on secondary or even at stores. I've seen these as high. It's about 350, but we'll get into that. So let's do a quick comparison here. All right, so it's pretty insane how different the noses are here. Remember, again, 12 years old versus 10. This has way more oak influence and an absolute 
This literally took every piece of vanilla out of the out of the barrel and just you know got into this bottle. It is so heavy vanilla and that little bit of a smoke just really you know differentiates it for the Elijah Craig barrel proof. The Elijah Craig barrel proof you definitely could smell the alcohol where in this you get some of that but it's mostly just barrel char and smoke and that rich vanilla note. All right, let's try the uh, Elijah Craig barrel proof. Damn, that friggin' batch is good. This is just very intense vanilla, caramel, butter pecan, as I like to say, butter pecan, butter scotch, however you want to, you know, whatever you want to call it. Beautiful finish on it. Not nearly as spicy and black peppery as the Parker's Heritage. Let's try the Parker's. The Parker's with that extra just richness of, of the, the barrel char and the, I'm getting a, a slight coffee note now, like a rich espresso, like that's, you know, smoky hot espresso. But again, the differentiator in this is still is that black pepper spice. The spiciness of it just really comes through. If you guys are expecting like a smooth sipper out of the Parker's, not this year. This, this brings the spice on the back end. One last sip of each one, and we'll kind of wrap it up here. The more this opens up, the more cherry, the more fruity it's getting. Black, uh, you know, dark fruits, blackberries, I think, a little bit. This is really good. I'm, I'm loving this one. So far, so good with the Parker's. For my first uh, purchase of a Parker's Heritage, I re I'm really enjoying this one, but again, I like something with a little bit of spice on the back end. You might not, but for me, I think this really kind of covers all the uh, all the bases of what I'm looking for in a really good bourbon. It's intensely vanilla, intensely caramel, has some great sweetness, but then gives you some layers of smoke, gives you some layers of, uh, of fruits and cherries and blackberries. I have a feeling that's gonna come out uh, the more this opens up a little bit, then that spiciness on the back end, I mean, I mean, you guys like spicy food? Who likes like spicy food? If you like spicy food, I, I feel like you're gonna love this friggin' Parker's Heritage. Um, if you want something a little bit sweeter, uh, not such a peppery finish, but still something a little bit older. I mean, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof is still very, very tough to beat for the price and for the value, honestly. Um, if you can find this and you do have this, I mean, it's pretty close. This does have some extra layers of flavor, though, that the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof does not have. But, you know, if you could still get this for about 65, 70 bucks, which is around half the price of this, you're still winning. But if you can come across this and you like that type of flavor profile, the smoke, the spice, the fruit, all that good stuff, that nice, long, peppery finish, you're going to love that. All right, so we're going to do the final breakdown, but I actually just want to blend this a little bit. I'm going to blend the Elijah Craig and the... <laughs> just to see what happens, how it comes out. All right, so final breakdown. Price for this, as I mentioned, is 120 bucks retail. Being it's hard to find and pretty sought after, these are already hitting the secondary for about $350 and above. Value for this to me, I think, is pretty much even. I think 120 bucks is where it should be. It's 10 years old. It's definitely got a different type of flavor profile than you're used to Elijah Craig. Special release, you know. You're raising some money for ALS. I don't mind the $120 price point on this. Uh, the most I paid for this, judging on how much I like it, if you saw this at a store for 200 bucks, that's probably the most I'd pay for it. I'm really enjoying it, I, again, but that's me. I love that flavor profile that I mentioned. If you don't, probably not worth that much to you, uh, but I would pay up to 200 for this just based on that mix of smoked cherry, vanilla bomb, caramel, and that spiciness on the back end. So the last one is, do I recommend? Um, it goes back to really what I was saying before, if you like that type of flavor profile. If you like something very smooth and very easy on the palate, not much of a finish, I don't think you're gonna like this. But if you like spicy food like I do, and you like a long peppery finish, some really intense sweetness, some smoke, and some vanilla flavors, for this bottle, more than anything, I think it really just depends on the, you know, the type of flavor profiles you like to drink. This isn't like a home run hitter, I think, for a lot of people. I think this is a very specific type of bourbon drinker. If you like spice, if you like the fruit, if you like intense vanilla caramels, but mainly you got to like that spice on the back end to, uh, for a recommendation to grab this bottle. All right, so before we sign off here, let's try the blend. See how this turned out, guys. Here we go. 
Not bad. You know what though? The Elijah Craig kind of took away that, that nice smoky char I was getting from the Parker's. But it also added a nice peppery finish to the Elijah Craig. Not a bad blend. I still think I'll enjoy them separate rather than together. Yeah, it's always fun to try some blends, guys. In any case, hope you enjoyed the review for the brand new Parker's Heritage release from Heaven Hill. The 10 year They're heavy char release. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit that like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram, find me on Twitter. Let me know if you've had this, what you think of it. Uh, do you like it as much as I do? I think this is going to be up there. As this opens up, going to see if it gets into my top five for, you know, maybe best bourbons of the year. We'll see what happens. Uh, and like I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. So cheers, and I'll see you next time on the Mash and Drum. Cheers to Parker Beam. We miss you. Take care.